Let's see, the Gentry Guild House. These are the warm-ups to the Patron Mansion. Yeah, look at all this. This is just, these are just the warm-ups of what our, the grandeur of our mansion is ultimately going to be. Returning to our patron let's play, we have our eyes on the prize. This episode, we want to be able to reach the true end game and construct for ourselves the patron's mansion. We have a little bit of research left to do. Things really start to bottleneck here rather than continuing to open out. So we have to get all of these other research projects completed to be able to get to the patron's mansion. And I am eyeing the perfect place on our island to build it. I want to be able to place it down here on this island. Basically, clear out this entire island to hold the patron's mansion. We'll f see if a few other buildings are going to make their way in there, but this is kind of within the bread baskets. So it'll be surrounded by pristine farmland um, and then have this mansion placed in the center with bridges leading all around. Looking forward to seeing how well we can develop this, um, but definitely looking to expand south down across these rivers as we go. We now stand 200 population strong and here I want to start building my bridges. So we have a nice section for several fields over on this bank and then a very large area over here on this bank. The rest of this kind of division of our island I'm setting up to be mostly foresters, uh, just giving them kind of the space they need to bring in all the wood for the town because I've been offsetting um, my wood demand by purchasing large amounts of lumber from the mainland, which I will continue to do to make expanding less of a headache and just kind of throwing out upgrades on those guys as we go. But let's get our bridges up. So I like using the large stone bridge. It is the biggest and most expensive, maybe not the most cost effective way to get across the river, especially given that I have seen the workers just be able to uh, walk straight across, but I'm not going to count on any uh, bugs keeping me uh, in business. We're gonna do it the legitimate way here. So we're gonna get the bridges running across, connect these up to the farm trails, and then figure out what we want to expand with on the other side of the bridges. We've balanced out our food consumption pretty well here, but we do need more luxuries coming in for the peasant class. So we're going to go for uh, flower fields over here on this bank. Kind of have them grouped together here. There should be plenty. So this will be bringing in another 1,500 luxury resources for the peasants at harvest time. Um, we're going to see how far that goes if we need to expand to even more. We are kind of walking the line of what the game is recommending in terms of our ratio of free workers. And there you go, running across the river again. That is never going to not bother me. They're just all... <laughs> they're all able to walk out of water. Perform miracles. They could become a saint in the church. We are the church of the water walkers. Uh, yes, there we go. It's a little awkward because it doesn't say... Uh, if it was going to be oriented like where it was starting because it's too wide which is just different than the way the other paths function it was just offset from the path i built so i wanted to rebuild there let me get these connected up and we kind of have the foundation of our new farmland i do like it i do like it and we'll keep on expanding to be able to make it look a little bit more natural if we're going to put our patron mansion over here on the central island We have been growing extremely quickly, uh, actually to the point of outstripping our production of tools, stone, bricks, etc., etc. So we have new brickworks or a new toolsmith, um, and then we got expansions. We had extra space to expand within the brickworks and the quarry that we already had. Though, if we get a few more people up, 
Mm, we might just do it now and go ahead and expand to having more. We also got this new coal mine. Digging as much as we can out of the ground here. There is so much plentiful ore that we are in. Um, no issue of ever running out of space of expanding our quarries. It's just kind of the bottleneck of the workforce. So yeah, we can expand. Honestly, getting another quarry could be a solid idea, though getting another brickworks as well might be more important because I'm building all of these two-story houses, and those take up a lot of bricks. And just these advanced buildings in general take up a lot of bricks and some of the upgrades to them. Like, what is it? The, uh, the guardhouse upgrade it costs 100 bricks. Where are you? Yep, here you are. Insulation. 300 coins, 100 lumber, and 100 bricks to improve the insulation on the guardhouse. It is worth it, though, to be able to save on firewood because we go through so much firewood, we had to put in that extra sawmill. This is it. We can research the patron's mansion once we have enough stone. And then it will take 50 days on top of that, costing us 9,000 gold as well. Ooh, it's going to be an expensive trophy house, but we're going to build it. We've done it. We have researched the patron's mansion. Now, we have not researched everything. We're missing a few of these policies. I think it's mostly only policies that we are missing that we've picked up everything else. Ah, we have a few beautification features that we have not researched, but we have uh, made it to the very end of the tech tree, picking up Patron's Mansion. Um, you know, missing out on those policies, I haven't really felt like I was missing out. The decrees that we are using here, I like food production, being able to give that boost to food production because so much of our economy goes into that. The immigration incentive to be able to grow our population faster, construction goods, to be able to improve wood production, also essential goods here to improve wood production. Those are what I'm using because wood is so much of a bottleneck and it, you need just so many forester huts everywhere, getting that extra efficiency on them. I have found to be good, but otherwise I have this extra influence and when I look over these other decrees, I don't feel like they really give me something here that um, I'm particularly interested in. Like I don't need a boost to my happiness. My happiness has always been very high. I might pass natality to be able to get a higher population because that'll increase your birth rate. Um, but some of these other ones, and then the ones that deal with like budgeting, where it'll cut down how expensive it is to run different production um, chains. Doesn't seem to really appeal to me because I make so much money. I have 37,000 coins in the bank here and we're just going up as we get more population. So I don't care about spending a lot of money for, for anything, honestly. But it's time to lay out the building space for our patron's mansion. I don't know if we're going to build it just yet, but I want to start making this space ready while I kind of have a lull of other things going on. We also have the other guild houses, the merchant and gentry guild houses, that I think are going to end up going onto this island as well. You know, we have the peasants and the laborers. They are off on the mainland over here next to all the residential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can sit over there. But we can work in the uh, more flamboyant Merchant's Guild House and Gentry Guild House over here where our patron mansion is going to be. This is going to be the Elite Club over here. Let's see, the Gentry Guild House. These are the warm-ups to the patron mansion. Yeah, look at all this. This is just, these are just the warm-ups of what our, the grandeur of our mansion is ultimately going to be. We have the two guild houses set up here, and they look absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're gonna take the shot to the frame rate and be able to pan around this one. So this is the Gentry guild house right here, looking incredible. The animators definitely had a field day with setting up these. They were like, what is the most extravagant building that you can make in the animation tools that we've already set up for this game? And they did it, they knocked it out of the park. And it's going to be even better once we add on our mansion, our personal mansion. So the personal mansion, obviously going to be center of the island. We're going to have this long walk leading up to it. And then out of the beautification options, maybe we do need to research everything here. We need to find the medium pond and the medium fountain just so that we have everything at our disposal 
to build up this island. If you guys are curious on checking in on the rest of the town, we are still expanding rapidly, adding more city blocks over here with the residential section and then kind of just filling in industry in a very haphazard manner. I think that this is going to be a new industry zone. I might extend this a little bit more. We already have a sawmill and a toolsmith here, and we need more of both of those, honestly. So keeping them together is going to make more sense in being able to kind of visualize how we've set up our economy. Now the trick here is that we can form a better square, a more efficient square, if we back the sawmill to the toolsmith and then the toolsmith to the sawmill as opposed to the same ones back to back. And then just because I'm a sucker for symmetry we're going to plop in a depot as well. And with the central area probably a stone well just to help with fires I suppose. I mean why not? Better safe than sorry. Loop this in a road and we're good to start producing. I feel like we do keep some fields out here. Um, we can grow flowers over here, sunflowers, something like that, that is both beautiful and practical on the shores of our island. Kind of like personal, personal gardens is what it'll appear as, but it will still add something to the overall town. And that's kind of the perfect intersection of what I enjoy in City Builders is when you can get um, layouts that are both aesthetically pleasing and still are meaningful in terms of kind of the strategy and systems in the game. With a year and a half to go in the episode, we have our farmers here working the gardens and I am really happy actually with how this island is starting to come together. At first I was like, it'll be a good spot, but it might feel a little empty, but I think that we have found a way to use this space really well to be able to show off um, the patron's mansion as the pinnacle here. I'm going to take the hit to the frame to be able to set it up here and place it down right in the center now let's see our boys get to work and set this up for us all around the mansion here we have gardens these are going to be flower fields because we still need uh, more of that luxury resource for the peasants and it's also going to look fantastic here we have our vineyards um, i might even get a distillery on this island to see how it fits maybe potentially put it over here next to the other depot that i built and then we have statues and other gardens and ponds around these guild houses and then a little depot kind of hidden over here to be able to give access on this side with um, some sunflower fields and other flowers that we are building or planting over there. This is definitely what we were missing. We were missing some flag posts in the area and then we are going to mark off the space around the mansion with a pathway because we're going to want more gardens in the forests around it. Oh, it's magnificent! Finish it work, little hammer man! The little Age of Empires hammer man, he's in this game too. And he's about to finish our mansion. The final piece of the tech tree, purely aesthetic, and we have it constructed. Look at at that and i suppose we have to just pick which room is ours wow your very own seat of power and a testament to your governing genius we have guided the town through the last uh 24 years of its existence taking it from a tiny colony to a thriving population of nearly 300 checking in on the town here don't worry we're gonna play this all the way out to the end of year 25 um, but the town is becoming a sprawling metropolis 
Metropolis is probably a little bit over ambitious, but we could get there. There is nothing stopping us from getting bigger and bigger. And honestly, there are no real pressing needs on the population as it stands. Everything is balanced pretty well. We have um, surpluses on food, on our essential resources, and even now we have surpluses on our luxuries, I think. I think with these added flower fields, we've been able to balance out the peasant luxury situation that was troubling me there for a little while. Here we are, I am going to consider the island finished. You know, there is a point where you just need to say that you're gonna stop adding to it. Yes, there is empty space, but that is fine. I actually like the way that it has come out uh, with the gardens and with all of the other structures all together. We will see. There might be some final additions, something to do on this peninsula, uh, but that is the only piece that I am not, you know, perfectly satisfied with. And now we pretty much have a year and a half to be able to guide our town and see, are we going to hit 300 population? Into what is going to be the final year of this episode. It is a good time at the 25 year mark to look back at where we have come from, how far we have come. When we started out, we were just this meeting hall, this block of houses, and then this tiny block of production, which has stayed here and been useful and manned the entire time. Uh, the gatherer's shelter, you know, probably not the most efficient use of workers, but here at the end, I'm not hurting for workers, so we're keeping it operation rather than tearing it down. The herbalist hut made us a fortune early on, and that bought us the upgrades we needed to be able to expand to where we are today in it. I really am honestly surprised myself at just how far we have come in terms of the extra blocks. It looks like we are easily going to pass 300 by the time we hit the 25 year mark. And then as we take stock of the overall balance of the economy, we have 66 free workers, which is pretty close to what the game is suggesting we should keep to be able to move goods efficiently around um, our town. We also have another 30 designated carriers, so that's 90 people total who are going to be moving resources here and about. 16 woodcutters, and so these are the guys making firewood. Um, we were constantly fighting, having enough firewood. And then we have our gatherers, our foresters, hunters, fishermen, large block in mining and a huge block in farming, and a bunch of toolsmiths, especially when you consider that you can only have two toolsmiths per building. And so a small division that kind of breaks out into handling all of the luxuries. The general breakdown is about one third of the population is working on procuring food. A third of the population is moving resources around for everybody else. And those everybody else is split about evenly between developing luxuries and producing construction materials. And that is uh, the point at which we are, as we would, con if we continued into the end game, it would probably become more efficient in terms of how many people were gathering food, um, and then we would index. So less of the population percentage-wise would be taken up in gathering food, and more of the population percentage-wise would go into making luxuries. And I mean, we'd still have to be gathering a lot of construction materials and producing a lot of firewood and like coal and other such things. One of our last big building projects here is going to be fighting against the never-ending battle of having enough storage space. There's just some things that you're going to inevitably run a large surplus on, and warehouses do not hold as much as you think they do. I, at one point, I was like, yeah, I'm going to build a bunch so that I don't have to worry about it for a while, 
And when I did that, I think I built two warehouses. Here we're going to build out an entire street and uh, still fully expect to have to build more eventually. Some real cornerstones of our economy are the ranches here, producing meat and then other animal byproducts, unless you know your pigs when your byproduct is just more meat. Um, but these guys have kept us fed very well, along with all of this, this farmland. And then these orchards, I mean the orchards do produce a lot, but for their space and then their upkeep, not so much, mostly keeping them to be able to run the distillery to be able to get cider here for the merchants who love the, uh, you know, the finer alcohols rather than just the bitter beers and whatnot. And then these extensions didn't end up becoming as expansive as I thought they were because we put so much more onto the island with the patron's mansion. But another big staple for us here uh, was fish. We got the fisherman's shack early on and we never looked back. Being able to produce nearly 900 fish per worker is so efficient. We uh, happily cashed the fish check. And then we just have all this space. It might look like we didn't develop it, but these they're dotted with the foresters' huts. Being able to keep in, take in enough wood, because wood gets sucked into just about every economic chain at some point. Like, this entire portion of the island is all foresters' huts. And if we were to play for a few more years, I would actually fill it in, in its entirety. Ooh, okay. A cult activity. 17 people have been pegged as part of a cult. Well, we have taken a stance that is pro-population expansion, never getting rid of people unless they were a nuisance to others, and that has served us well as we just hit the 300 mark. We were probably there for a little bit, and I just didn't uh, call it out or notice it. But we have passed 300 at year 25. Man, I, I'm a sucker for hitting these whole number breakpoints. I love it. And we got our row of warehouses. <laughs> the thing is, these don't have to be practical to access. You can build them wherever you want. You could have them in the corners, facing away. People never have to access them because all of your storage space is just universal. So there, we were finally able... We doubled our storage space going from like... Well, almost, less than doubled, but... We got enough that I'm finally going to have that digging of storage space low off my back for at least a little while. And it does look, it actually looks like a busy, busy town. All these people going to and fro. And so the reason that you get so much traffic within uh, these city streets is because all of these houses, this needs insulation. All these houses are destinations that require food, luxuries, and firewood. So people are constantly traveling out to the storehouses and then back to their house. You see all the variety of goods that this house has in its inventory. They have to constantly take them in and then they consume these burn them up, and then go out and gather more. So, I mean, looking at all the variety that our people have, everything that is available to them, they've been living a good life here on the island. Wherever they moved from, I sure hope that they are happy in their new life, because we've tried our best to uh, make it as healthy and productive a island as possible. Aside from some of the rioting and other early speed bumps that we hit as we were kind of just learning the game, I think that we were very successful, hugely successful in this Let's Play. While I will be taking a break from the series, video series following this specific town, don't worry, there are more patron projects in the works here, and I will, of course, be returning when the developers hit us with any big updates. So far, they've shown that they are going to be very diligent in terms of supporting this game, and there is that bar that says DLC on the launcher and in the main menu, so... I am sure that there's going to be a lot more content coming out for this game and I am excited to see what that is going to be and in the meantime I want to be able to cover some more guides and be able to share kind of more of my lessons in a different format of what I have learned from doing these Let's Plays. So thank you guys for watching and hope to see you in some future videos.